Former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick sexually abused minors and seminarians for decades, and ended up being promoted through the church's ranks at a remarkable speed. How did this happen? Two years ago, the former papal ambassador to the United States, Carlo Maria Vigano, released a bombshell letter claiming that Pope Francis and other Vatican officials knew about McCarrick's abuse and chose to promote him anyway. The Vatican released an unprecedented 400-page report on who knew exactly what about McCarrick and when, and how McCarrick was able to rise through the ranks. I'm Colleen Deli, host of the Inside the Vatican podcast. In this video, we'll get into the top five things that you need to know about this report, including how much Pope Francis knew. We'll get to that in a moment. According to the report, no one complained about McCarrick to the Vatican until 1999. That was when McCarrick, who was by now a successful fundraiser and had been a bishop in New York and New Jersey, was being considered to become Bishop of Washington, D.C., and then Cardinal. That year, the Cardinal Archbishop of New York, John O'Connor, sent a letter to the Vatican summarizing complaints against McCarrick. The most troubling accusation, though O'Connor didn't describe this clearly in his letter, involves several anonymous letters that accused McCarrick of pedophilia with the young men that he called his nephews. Although no substantive details were included in the anonymous accusations, they described events that were similar to those in the credible accusations against McCarrick that would come to light in 2017. But in the 90s and early 2000s, because these claims were made anonymously, they were not investigated. And while we know the anonymous letters made it to Rome, it's not clear if they ever got to John Paul II. There was a second complaint included in Cardinal O'Connor's summary. This was made by a former priest who alleged that he had seen McCarrick engaging in sexual conduct with another priest, and that McCarrick had solicited him for sex as well. But this complaint was thrown out because the priest was deemed unreliable as he had his own history of sexually abusing children. The last complaint was that McCarrick had shared a bed with seminarians and young adult men in New Jersey. John Paul II asked four New Jersey bishops to investigate these claims. They concluded that while McCarrick had shared a bed with men, they couldn't confirm that there was any sexual misconduct. That report played a major role in John Paul II's decision-making, but this new Vatican report revealed that three of those four bishops had given John Paul II incomplete or misleading information. Those three bishops are now all dead. The report also says that John Paul II went forward with promoting McCarrick to Washington, D.C. because he trusted him. The two had known each other for a long time. And John Paul II had witnessed priests being accused of all kinds of things when Poland was under communist rule. So when McCarrick swore that the allegations were false, John Paul believed him. When Pope Benedict came along, he didn't ask for McCarrick to be investigated. He assumed that John Paul had looked into the allegations, and he trusted his judgment. In 2005, the year that Benedict was elected, more details came out in the case of the abuser priests who had complained. Remember, this was about the abuse of adults. Vatican officials under Benedict decided not to investigate. Instead, they told McCarrick to retire after Easter 2006, which he did, and to keep a lower profile, which it's not clear if he did. Those instructions to keep a lower profile are the closest thing to what Archbishop Vigano called sanctions in his bombshell 2018 letter. But the Vatican's report says that these were not formal sanctions. And unlike what Vigano said, they didn't prohibit McCarrick from celebrating public masses, which he continued to do. The main guideline was that he cut down on high-profile appearances and cut down on his travel, which it's not clear that he did. The report says that after Pope Francis became Pope, he learned about the instructions that had been given to McCarrick, but he didn't learn the reasons behind them. He assumed that this robust travel schedule that McCarrick had kept up was fitting with the way that Benedict intended the instructions to be taken. So Francis allowed things to keep going that way. Now let's talk about Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. While working in the Vatican's Secretariat of State, Archbishop Vigano wrote two memos, one in 2006 and one in 2008. In these memos, he suggested that a canonical process should be opened to determine whether there was any truth in the rumors and allegations about McCarrick's misconduct. As we mentioned earlier, that investigation was never carried out. This Vatican report corroborates what Vigano said about sending those memos in 2006 and 2008, but it refutes what he said about Francis lifting sanctions on McCarrick. And the report directly accuses Vigano of failing to investigate McCarrick when he was told to do so by the Vatican. It says that in 2012, Vigano received a complaint about McCarrick abusing seminarians. He passed this along to the Vatican's Congregation for Bishops. Cardinal Ouellette, who ran the Congregation for Bishops, responded to Vigano and told him to investigate McCarrick, 
which Vigno didn't do. As we've already said, this Vatican report goes against Vigano's claim that Francis knew about McCarrick's abuse. Vigano's claim hinged on a conversation that he said he had with the Pope in 2013, where he warned Francis about McCarrick. The Vatican report says there's no documentation of that conversation ever happening, and if it did happen, it says the evidence is sharply divided on what was said. So what did Francis know from his election in 2013 until 2017? The report says that between 2013 and 2017, internal information about McCarrick's abuse and his activities were raised on occasion with the Pope. But it says Francis didn't hear anything about McCarrick abusing children until 2017. As soon as that report was received in New York and deemed credible in 2018, Pope Francis took the action of removing McCarrick from ministry. Soon after that, he demanded McCarrick's resignation from the College of Cardinals, making McCarrick the highest profile prelate ever to resign over sexual abuse. What Francis did know before 2017 is that McCarrick was rumored to have shared a bed with and harassed seminarians. Rumors of that had been floating around the Vatican for a long time. So let's talk about why nothing was done. One big reason is that in the eyes of the Vatican, sexually abusing adults is not seen as being as grave as sexually abusing children. It's only in recent years that the Vatican's anti-abuse measures have started referring to vulnerable adults as well as children as potential victims. It's also only in recent years that the Vatican has started putting in place measures to prevent bishops from abusing their power over others. As we know, bishops were largely left out of the church's original response to the abuse crisis in 2002. Another reason that nothing was done is that the claims against McCarrick about abusing priests and seminarians were thrown out or minimized under John Paul II. That either happened because of misleading claims from bishops, or because sources were deemed unreliable or they stayed anonymous. And as we've described, subsequent leaders built on that foundational failure. The good news is, as of last year, there are now Vatican protocols in place that require even anonymous claims to be investigated. But this report hasn't solved everything. So let's talk about the open questions. The biggest open question is about accountability. While this report was a huge step forward in Vatican transparency, it leaves open the question of whether anyone who covered up McCarrick's abuse or failed to thoroughly investigate it, including popes, will face any punishments. Against internal resistance, Pope Francis insisted that this report be completed and published. Pope Francis has made courageous efforts to eliminate clericalism and to ensure accountability and transparency, particularly around this question of sexual abuse. So will this report set a new standard for transparency in the Vatican? Or will the Vatican just return to its usual way of operating? We'll be covering the McCarrick Report and what happens next here on our YouTube channel, at americamagazine.org, and on our podcast, Inside the Vatican. So for more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. For America Media, I'm Colleen Deli, host of Inside the Vatican. We'll see you next time.